What's going on everybody? So today's review I'm very excited about. This was a film from last year that I really wanted to see. Didn't get a chance to see it until very recently. You could technically consider this episode a Criterion Corner episode. Criterion announced recently that they are going to be putting this movie out. The film I'm going to be talking about today is Drive My Car. Drive My Car is directed by Ryusuke Hamaguchi. Yusuke Kafuku, a stage actor and director still unable after two years to cope with the loss of his beloved wife, accepts to direct Uncle Vanya at a theater festival in Hiroshima. There he meets Misaki, an introverted young woman appointed to drive his car. In between rides, secrets from the past and heartfelt confessions will be unveiled. This movie is a three hour runtime, and I think that's probably part of the reason why it took me so long to get around to seeing it. But my God, is it the most purposeful three hours I've ever seen. This is one of the most beautiful human stories I've ever watched. It's vulnerable. It gets into the mind of people in a way that I feel like a lot of movies don't explore. It has this incredibly overwhelming, empathetic message about relationships and how people impact you at certain points in your life. The dynamics between people, horrible atrocities that can happen in somebody's life, taking the blame over something that isn't necessarily your fault. And it's just some of the most incredible acting and filmmaking I've seen in a, a very long time. The first thing I want to talk about is the performances. Everyone in this film is just fucking phenomenal. And the fact that these actors didn't get Oscar nominations is mind boggling to me. I know it won Best International Feature, which between this and The Worst Person in the World, which are two of the best international films that came out last year, and that neither one of them got more recognition is mind boggling to me because these movies are both so beautiful. And Drive My Car in particular, I just was so immersed in these characters in the world. Our lead character, Kafuku, is just incredible he he just steals the show as far as just like getting into his mind as an actor and watching him slowly open up we don't even get the title cards to this film until 45 minutes into the movie and obviously as the description says he loses his wife and he loses her in a really horrible way and in the first 45 minutes of the film, you really get the buildup of their relationship, but then a reveal as to something that makes their relationship more complex. And him blaming himself for his wife's death and how the plot point elements of the play that he's working on come into play with the actual plot elements of the film. And then you have this guy who he seemingly suspected to have an affair with his wife who comes to work on the play with him and how that creates an even more complex character dynamic. There's so many things about this movie that I want to talk about, and <laughs> because I would, I could make this like a 40 minute long video, I'm gonna try to condense my thoughts as much as possible. But one of the things I really loved about this movie is the way that it looks at different cultures and backgrounds in such a beautiful way. One of the things about our lead character's performances is he doesn't cast based on the language you speak. He doesn't give a shit. It's all about dedication to the performance and caring about the material. And what's so cool is when they give these performances, there's this huge screen in the background that has it in English, in Japanese, in Mandarin, in Korean, in all these different languages. And I loved that about this movie because it has this cross section of cultures and understanding that where people come from is such a beautiful thing and appreciation for other cultures. One of the guys who works at this school where our lead character is hired in, he's an interpreter as well who helps interpret for him because our lead character speaks Japanese and he also speaks English. Well, this guy who's working there speaks sign language, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, and then like you have one of the lead actresses, she speaks English and Chinese. And it's so amazing to see the performances and there's this really amazing scene that was really impactful to me. They're in the room doing the table read of this performance. And at first our lead character tells them that the most important part of this of the performance is memorizing the dialogue and understanding the cues back and forth. 
And so he will have them read the line in their language and then hit the table so that the next person knows when it's their time to come in. And because they might not speak the same language as the person sitting next to them, it doesn't matter. And then there's this whole element introduced. There's this woman who comes into audition and they let them know that she only knows Korean, but not only does she only know Korean, she, she can only use sign language. And they, her performance is just so beautiful and captivating and amazing. And how, you know, you look back at last year's Oscars at a film like Coda, where I feel like the deaf community doesn't always get the best representation. And I'm glad that in the past couple of years, you look at a film like Sound of Metal, or you look at Coda, or you look at this, that you're getting more representation of the deaf community. People don't understand that sign language is a language and that there's such a beauty to it and an emotiveness to it when people perform. And I think that came through so well in this film on top of all the other things that are introduced. Our lead actress who plays the driver is phenomenal and I love how her vulnerability is so slowly introduced and how because this movie has such a long runtime, it gives you time to sit with these characters so that it feels natural when these things are introduced. This is how long it would take for someone to reveal this personal level of information to someone else. And it's heart-wrenching listening to the way she was raised, her relationship with her mother. There's so many elements to this movie that make it so beautiful that by the third act, there's when they're performing this play at the end, I just could not stop crying because it was just so beautiful at how the elements of the, the play are coming into play with the real life world that we're introduced to. And that made it so impactful and seeing our lead character's relationship with his wife and the complex dynamics of he thought she was having an affair and does that really change how much he loved her and how much of an impact that she had on his life. And I felt like this was so beautiful and vulnerable and incredible. And it's something, like I said, I could talk about for a half hour, just each intricate detail. But this is just my glowing recommendation that if you have not seen Drive My Car yet, please watch it. It is a very, it's a slower paced film. It's a very human movie. It's mostly about the interactions between these characters. It has absolutely beautiful cinematography. The soundtrack in this movie is amazing. There's so many unique shots. There's this really amazing shot of the car driving and it cuts to a cassette tape playing and the wheels of the car transition to the cassette tape wheel spinning. And there's just so much attention to detail and just little things like that. And it's one of the movies that makes you love film even more. And I can't highly recommend this enough. Just go watch it right away. So have you seen Drive My Car? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I think that if I redid my 2021 list, this would be in the top three. It was just absolutely amazing. And it's a movie that I can see myself watching again and again and never getting tired. Of. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always trying to put out new material, excited to get it out there for you, and I look forward to putting out new videos in the future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.